This is a Fulcrum Technologies screencast. Hello there, I'm Rex Proctor. Thank you for joining me in this screencast. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at two features of the Cartesian feature set. The first feature is scaling, and the second will be traces. Now, scaling allows you to set up a grid resolution for your Cartesian button. Let's have a look at one. If I select my football pitch here, I, it is an attribute, and I have Cartesian ticked. Now you'll see here that the scale is set from 0 to 105. Now the Cartesian coordinate plane starts at the bottom left corner of the graphic or your Cartesian button. So this is 0, 0 and this is 1, 1 if you're using it in just pure 0 to 1 values as we have been in the past. The scaling allows you to adjust that range minimum and maximum of the X and Y axis of the Cartesian plane that we're clicking on. So here, a lot of football pitches are 0 to 105 meters long and 68 meters wide. I know they're not all that way, but that is sort of where they target the, the dimensions to be. So here, because my pitch is set up east to west with the goals to my left and to my right, my scale X is going to be from 0 to 105, because I'm thinking in meters, and my scale Y is going to go from 0 to 68. Now I've set a step value in that range to step by 1, so that will create 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on both in the X and Y as a grid system on top of the button. So when I click, I will always get returned an integer value of the coordinates exactly where I click on in the Cartesian button. So that's important. You can set up the scaling to have negative values. You can set the stepping to do you know, decimals and so forth. But I would recommend starting off with like meter by meter or centimeter by centimeter or foot by foot, you know, kind of think in that sort of way so that it's returning these values that are going to make a lot of sense to you uh, in the real world. Let's see how this looks. So I'm going to jump into mark mode and I've just got a simple uh, set of qualifiers with the attribute being the um, pitch map there. So I'm going to say a pass and it occurred right here. Okay, I'm going to tab out of that and let's have a look at that pass in our attribute editor. So here you can see that my pass action location, which was my attribute, was 16 meters to the right of the bottom left corner and then 14 meters up from 16 over from the bottom left corner of the button. Now let's let's do one more just so we, we have that. I'm just going to hit it right in the middle. So I'm going to go right there. And now when I click on that, you can see that we're 52 along that. So I almost got it pretty close. And we're 33 up. So we've almost split it in the middle. So that's kind of giving you what you expect in your mind where that location would be um, along our Cartesian plane when the origin is in the bottom left corner of the graphic. All right, so that is how you do that. Now let's have one more example here because I want to talk about north-south. So here I've got a basketball shot chart. So let's have a look at, at this value here. So I've set this up because a basketball court is 50 feet wide by 94 feet long and I have a half court. I've set up my scale x to be 0 to 50 along the x-axis and I've halved the 94 so it's 47 feet from the half court line to the baseline. So that will give me now with my step set to 1 that will now give me feet by feet in my grid resolution when I click on this. So let's jump into mark mode and let's have a three pointer right there. Let's have a three pointer miss over here and let's have a field goal from there. Now let's tab out and you'll notice when I tab out that those little traces disappear. We're going to introduce traces next. 
and I click on that clip, it's going to show me each of those qualifiers and their X and Y location. Let's focus in on the last one here, which was 24 over, which is damn near cut 47 in half, and then it's 27 feet up from the midline here. So you can, you can set up your resolutions however you like, but I strongly suggest that you kind of stick to using integers until you're more comfortable with those values and, and can kind of get used to it. Now, I tease the traces a little bit here. So let's go back into our football Cartesian one and let's go to edit mode and have a look at the traces option. Now traces show you where you clicked in the Cartesian coordinate plane on top of the graphic or your button. So let's set up a trace value for four. Now that is going to show me the last four clicks and the tail end will be cut off as we go to the fifth one. Now there are multiple options for how things are displayed while you're entering the Cartesian data. You have arrows which show you the direction of where you were clicking. So that trace, it's going to give you a, a pointer showing you know, where the last one came from. And then we have arrows and lines. The lines are hashed lines that show you the connections between them. And then you have simple dots, and then you have dots and lines. So let's look at arrows and lines. I'm gonna jump into mark mode, and I'm gonna say there was a pass that occurred here. The pass was received here. The person dribbled to there. Now, I'm going to pause it here. Let's have a look at this. So we can see the pass. It's the same color. This is the qualifier. And it traveled to there. And then we received a pass. And then we dribbled to there. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, let's see if we go dribble to there. Now, you'll see what's going to happen next is let's say they take a random shot here. And I click on shot. And then I click to there you'll see that our first click has been erased. So that's the tail end of the trace. Because our trace value is set to four, the fifth one being, you know, is gonna be dropped off. So tracing can get really messy, but you, you, it's up to you however you want it to look, but you've just gotta decide on that trace value. Now, another thing that I want to show here is if I tab, that is going to erase those traces. Currently, we do not have a way of replaying the trace, but we do store all of the data, and in the future, you will be able to retrace or, or redisplay the trace, retrace the trace, I guess this is the way to put it. Now, let's have a look at this little guy right here. Now, what I want to show is we're going to jump in and do this again. So let's say that there was a pass there, pass was received there, and then they dribbled there. And I want to use that same location because if they dribbled to that point and then they took a shot, the shot came from the point at which you clicked on the dribble. If you hold command, it will use the last value, last Cartesian value as, as its Cartesian value. So here I'm gonna go command. And you'll notice that that blue changes to uh, uh, pink because it's a shot, but the Cartesian location is exactly the same. So that is where the shot was taken from. So let's tab out and let's look at that clip. And you'll see here that I dribbled to this point and then I took a shot from that same point. So that command key allows you to use the last value. Um, and I'll just show you one more little trick here that's kind of cool. So let's say shot there and I just hold command and I keep clicking, you'll see that that image gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, that little circle, the diameter expands, showing you how many times you've clicked on that. So kind of giving you some idea that, that you've used that value a few times. Kind of a clever trick. Uh, as you're doing tracing, there may be events, say you're tracking balls during, or you're tracking ball uh, movement uh, in a possession. If you do that and you want to clear the, the, the trace away based on a change in possession, we've added a button or a, an action type called 
clear traces up and down. So let's say that we're going to take this and we're going to make this attacking transition, make it transition defense, make that red. And when that occurs, we'll set up this button to do a clear traces when it goes down and we'll link that to there. And I'll just demonstrate this very quickly. Pass to there. And then when I go down, it clears the trace. And then I can continue on, you know, with the tracing. And that covers the scaling and the tracing for the Cartesian feature set. Thank you for listening and watching.